welcome to Let's Play Game Expo. I am Chris Delp, Community Liaison of Freeplay Arcade. I'm being joined by the CEO of Freeplay, the man that everybody wants to talk to, Corey Hyden. That is my title. It's always funny, like, when we check the comments, sometimes we were like, they're trying to make themselves feel important by calling them C CEO. It's like, it's actually required that a corporation has right. a chief executive. So, like, it's just, you know, it's not me trying to feel important. It's literally just uh, mandatory. So, right, right, anyways, right. Uh, we're here. We're at Let's Play 2019 uh, Irving Convention Center at Las Colinas is the name, I think, of the convention center. Or is it the other yeah. way around? Yeah, I is think it? you got it right. Ir the Irving Convention Center at Las Colinas. So, yes. uh, it looks like the, the Jawa like, sand crawler from, yeah. from the it's first this, Star Wars movie. It's like this massively kind of weird building because it's yes. got this main convention floor, and then it's got all these floors above us that right. are like, uh, you know, and they've got here at Let's Play all sorts of stuff going on. They have the entire facility doing right. all sorts of crazy stuff. No lights. Right. Whole place, right. as you can see. Uh, well, and it's it's nice because I, I know convention centers probably get uncomfortable. When we're like, we're gonna want it, the lights pretty dim, um, and they're like, why, why would you buy? And we're for the monitors, right? The screens need to look good. Yeah. you can't have lights above them. So uh, they worked with us on that. So uh, this is our one, two. Is this the f how many let's plays? Is this the fourth let's play? Fourth? Is this this is where Freeplay did made its debut, right? Right. So uh, right. we haven't had our fourth anniversary yet, right? Right. But it was before Freeplay. Right. 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 So this is four. Uh, I think so. I think this is Let's Play 4. I think they had two at the Plano Center, and then this is the second here at uh, this location. That makes sense, although every day feels the same day. I, I, no, no, I, th I think we've done this place twice now. Or this yeah. is the third time. Yeah, yeah. You think so? Okay. I, Whatever. Well, the, the it's all good people times. on the internet will check, and they, yeah, will, yeah. they will tell us how it is. Um, all right, so this year, Let's Play is different. Uh, Let's Play, uh, in previous years, one of the things that really bolstered Let's Play was a Smash Brothers tournament. Right, Low Tier City. Like, low Tier City, uh, which was actually run by and owned by people that were involved in like the founding of Let's Play. Yes. So it made sense to kind of team it up. Plus, if there's one thing anyone knows about Smash Brothers, you'll get bodies. You'll get people there. Yeah, um, over a thousand. So, just just uh, for Smash. Right. And and this was a you know a major Smash Brothers tournament. You could go on any of the forums. People were talking about what happened at this event. Um, and uh, not here this year. Uh, yes. and, and last year they had a, a fighting game uh, like mid-major type event called right, uh, right. Kumite in Texas. Yeah, and that was their first year of existence, I do believe. And so, the, yeah, that stuff is not here this year, which I'm going to be just straight. I think it's really cool. Uh, I think it's really cool to have Let's Play focused on the actual kind of premise of the convention, which is finding a bunch of cool games and just playing them. Right. Um, so that's that's kind of what it, it really feels like. There's just people playing games all over the place. Correct. It's awesome. And we're here. It's still early. It's Friday. No yes. one's off of work yet. It's three. It's before 3 p.m., um, but they did an uh, early open this time at noon, I think. Uh, so Correct. we've had some early action. Free Play's back, of course, 30-plus arcade games. We've got Rogue Snaps here with, like, 50-plus games, and a couple community members brought some other stuff uh, in terms of the arcade. Well, well, well more than I've been able to play in this short amount of time. Yeah, I, I mean, the lineup is really cool. We did a walkthrough that y'all can, can check out. If people come through here and they would just want to play games, they just want to do the title thing of Let's Play Game Expo, you won't be able to play all the games. They're everywhere. Yeah, and, and yeah, and so yeah, beyond just the arcade stuff, there's all these classic consoles, all these vendors. Uh, uh, it's an expanded vendor area. Yes. You've got like Microsoft here doing some promos for Xbox. You've got um, Gearbox here doing promos for Borderlands. Um, and all sorts of just major, and GameStop here sponsoring the Wizard Tournament, uh, which I guess, I, will you tell me what this, what, what is happening in the Wizard Tournament? The Wizard Tournament, it's a multi-game tournament uh, format, which is similar to um, our Arcade Spring Series championships. Um, they are competing on 10 different games with a cumulative score uh, being determined used to determine who moves on to the next round. Got it, got it. Uh, first two rounds are on Friday and Saturday. It's on four games. They have already uh, revealed what the four games are. It's Final Fight on the Super Nintendo. Whoa. Kirby's Dream something. Land. Dreamland Kirby's Dream on Land. the Game Boy, but it's actually... <laughs> Oh. But it's actually on the like the Super Nintendo Game Boy Player, right? Right. Or maybe it was that the N64. That, that makes it easier. Right. Yeah. Yeah. More more practical sort of RC RC program, and what's the other one? The other one is some shooter. I can't remember. A shooter. Right. right. Um, a cool shooter, but it's pocket um, pocket rocket. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's uh wow. And it's cumulative score, and it's weighted as a veteran of playing in many, many, many of these tournaments. I can tell you that like. When you try and weight the the formats, the tournament organizers do not understand how to weight them because yeah, they don't understand 
how the game is so, going to work so in it's, practice. So you play five minutes, I guess, or ten minutes or something? Five minutes with weighted scores. Right, I understand. But they don't understand. <laughs> well, that's, that's dangerous. Like, that's going to be weird. You understand how right, that right. they don't understand. And they indeed don't understand, so it's going to be well, if definitely weighted in one game's favor, but we're going to see which game that <laughs> is going to be. Well, if there's one thing we know, it's that this is a crazy bold thing to try to pull off. Um, it is. It is. They, and and, um, and they're, they're, getting, they're getting the wizard uh, cast out here. Yeah, yeah. I saw um, a bunch of different cast members on the attendee list. They're doing, like, panels with the wizard people. They're showing the wizard at Alamo Drafthouse. Yeah. They, are, they have a big stage that they have set up that they're trying to, like, recreate the feeling of the wizard at the right. end um, with the announcer and everything like that. Um, so I they're going all out. I hear they're going to be filming it to, to perhaps put on a, a future release of the wizard. Nice, like, nice. To, to show right, like video a little footage a of the, bonus of feature. Yeah. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it, the it, ultimate of that type of tournament. Well, and, and there's still a lot there of little, uh, like the major kind of retro tournaments, right? We still have like a Tetris tournament. Yeah, the, the, uh, the World, I forget what, it's World Series of Gaming, I think it's some, something, yeah, like something like that. Something like that. It's going to be doing this. The, yes, the Tetris qualifier is here. It's over uh, your right shoulder. Right, I guess right. the audience is left. They're doing um, a um, NHL 94 challenge. NHL 94. Yes, yes, which might end up, if my phone goes off, it might be you and me in the finals. Nice, nice. Uh, I provided two of the carts for right. it. Um, All I can say is Wayne Gretzky needs to watch his head. <laughs> well, and, and that's kind of interesting, too, because I, I, what they're doing is, in many ways, NHL 94 was one of like the very first um, eSport type video games. It, it had such a massive competitive um, arena yeah. that it really kind of took over. It's kind of like what you think about like Madden today. NHL 94 really had that nationwide com like competitive. Well, I mean, it's the game from Swingers. Right. Like that's 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 it's. I would say it's main notoriety. Like is is that scene well, from Swingers that we all remember of, of <laughs> Wayne Gretzky? What, what game were they open? playing at the beginning of Mal is Mal is Jason? I don't know about that one. Is that, yeah, it's, it's some of the, It's one release, it, but it, it, it might be. Um, but I don't know if it's that one. But anyways. But yeah, that, that, um, that whole series back then, the original EA releases of the NHL, wildly underrated. Right. Fantastic They're great games. games. Yeah. Um, They're a lot super of fun, fun to play. I mean, that's, that's, they really captured. Hopefully um, they'll get some people to play it. Right. Because it's a fun game. Well, that's that's the hard thing, right? They have a bunch of tournaments starting oh, at Friday. Oh, they're wildly broken, too. And, like. and it's so hard to... Um, to get so many people to show up in time to, to do this much stuff. Like, they're going to have thousands and thousands of people here. Yes. But they have so much stuff you can do. And then they've got panels. And I, I was looking at the panel schedule this year. is pretty insane. I mean, they've yeah. got serious voice talent. Serious, like, uh, like your anime and video game voiceover talent. Right. They have programmer talent here. Tons yep. of classic game, like, makers. The actual creators of these games yes. here doing panels. They've got, of course, the Gearbox stuff loaded with panels. Uh, hyping Borderlands 3 coming out. Um, and then they've got things like vendor panels, how to run a, um, attend a con as a seller panels. I mean, just like every kind of, and it, it looked, and I, I haven't like Surreal. necessarily compared uh, the last couple of years, but this year's um, panels looked much better than I can recall. Yes. Like, like just because these, this year is like insane. Like right. all the years have been great, but this is like, this lineup is nuts. Yeah, um, no, you're just running into voice actors and, and industry people left and right. Right. Um, like, literally running into them, excuse me, and then <laughs> right. moving on. And oh, like, yeah, oh, is that you? Oh, they're yeah, all here hanging out at this arcade playing right. games. Like, it's right. so cool. Um, every once in a while, one of us recognizes the other, and then there's the awkward thing where it's like, hey, aren't you that guy that owns that play? Yeah, bye. Gotta go. Right. <laughs> So that's so, happened like seven times already. No, it's um, so we're here. I mean, free place here, kind of just. I mean, we're supporting the arcade. We have you know a bunch of different players coming that are regulars at our arcade coming to play in these tournaments, see how it goes. Because I mean, we definitely respect how bold the Wizard Vision is here. We've done um, one ourselves, right? Yeah, we've done this type of tournament, and we want to make sure we're supporting it because it's hard to get good support for these types of things. But they're fun. Um, they're really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and so when I when I read about them trying it, I was like, man, we got to make sure we we go all out and make sure that we're we're helping bolster like the participation, telling making sure that our gamers that are regulars know about uh, what's I going on. I want a clean sweep. I want to go on the internet at the time this podcast is released and learn that the free play arcade regulars just won everything. Yeah, I want to see some free play shirts. That'd yeah. be cool. Um, so. Uh, what? How are you planning on spending your days, though? Besides the tournaments here, I mean, you're here, you know, the week for the weekends. Uh, we got cool arcades. We got Killer Queen. We've got Super uh, Turbo. We've got some major stuff here. It's gonna be whatever people come up to me and ask me to play. I'm, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and meet as many people as possible. As always, it, it, I always get pulled in 17 different directions. So right. I, don't, I don't know in the end what I'll be doing. 
Well, I will definitely play some Killer Queen. I, you know, I got my entire team here. We can we can be terrible together. Well, I imagine your entire team is also playing in the the Wizard Tourney, right? Because almost all your, yeah. your team yeah. is kind of composed of some of our, our like super talented regulars. Right, so. right, right. And that's none of us are yet good at Killer Queen. I'm the best, which is not saying I'm that good. I'm just the best of the, the five of us. Well, and what I really love about the setup here, um, uh, we were bringing in games on Wednesday, and they've just got these pallets of CRTs that they're unloading. Um, and I'm just it makes me so happy because you see a lot of um, cons now that are even retro-focused, and they'll just be unloading this, the uh, LCDs. Here's your Raspberry Pi. Unloading the LEDs, right. Hitting you with, like, you know, emulated game and a junkie control like it's there's so much dedication here to doing it right um that like i want to make sure we're supporting it as long as it can like it's so cool and i i really of course i absolutely hate it when you show up to a tournament and they're like advertising classic game blah blah blah, blah and you show up and it's you know some re-release on an xbox one or whatever right, right, and, right and they're like this is what this is the same thing and you're like no nah, but not really right yes i've uh, competed in those tournaments before yeah, as well and yeah. those are the worst yes um, yeah it's tough when you're when you're practicing sonic the hedgehog on a second genesis and you get there and it's the 360 re-release right right yeah um and and we, we understand the practicalities but that's what actually makes this so special right going no, above I see, and beyond I see NES. Right there. Right, yeah. I see NESs. Well, I saw them on I was. It was super impressive. And, yeah, they've got multiple stage setups. Yeah. Um, let's see. We hit the vendors. We hit panels. Um, they've got all these little tournaments going on. The vendors, of course. Uh, so I Expanded areas. Yeah, we I, have friends in the vendor area. Uh, Freaks and Geeks, who's been sponsoring Tuesday Night Fights for forever. they got a booth out there. Alec is there. Um, Chito, our, our commentator, has his little uh, console uh, place out there in the vendor area. The, a handful of them. Well, and, and I think we've probably talked about it before, but last year there was a perfect storm of conventions where three conventions were scheduled in the same yeah, weekend. Yeah, I want to say it was Classic Gaming Fest in Austin happened the exact same well, day, not yeah, the same time Retro now. Palooza Houston, yeah. Classic Game Fest, and Let's Play, I think, were all booked on the same weekend. Yes. Uh, and I think that resulted in a lot of uh, spread. <laughs> yeah. Like vendors having to make choices and not, that sucks. So right. what's really cool is um, here we are. Uh, yeah, now we got everybody here. Huge vendor area, lots of really good stuff. I'm... I, I'm really surprised so many people showed up this early on Friday because I know around probably in an hour or so it's going to be packed with people trying to get to that vendor area. I think it's the savvy crowd trying to get in and experience well, everything while they have time. I saw plenty of people um, waiting in line only, not for the arcade though, they were going to come play the arcade, not to do, they wanted to make sure that they got the first crack of anything that was at a vendor table that was super rare that they've been looking for forever, maybe a vendor had a good deal on something, it doesn't matter, they were there and they were just going to pour through everything. So I like the variety too, I'm seeing console things, I'm seeing, I haven't seen any arcade, right. so there isn't, hasn't been an arcade shop, but there there have been, uh, was it figurines, like at Acom we saw, um, there's, uh, you know, art places, you know, like Pixel Princess, right, that yeah. we've seen them around as well. Um, so there's 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 definitely art stations. There's voice actors. Um, there's the the Charity Life uh, Charity. I've seen Extra Life right there. Yeah. On, uh, have, has they a big have, stage. They have like their own stage for streaming. Good, it's, good. It's awesome. You should, you should support them. They're they're a good good uh, good charity. Well, but, yeah, um, I, we, you know we go extra uh, and we love them and it's. Yeah. It, it's always what it's really important to us, right? To make sure that we're connecting. I mean, especially in the current uh, world, making sure we're connecting gaming and doing good. Um, because I think gaming, we do a lot of good with our with video games, and we, not only do we bring like entertainment and happiness, we do actual charity work through our video game playing and raise lots of money. Um, it's it's weird living in the world we do right now where it is very weird. Randomly, people are like, let's just attack video games and stuff like yes. that. It, it it makes me just crazy. It um, makes me crazy too. I can't believe that it's a political conversation at this point because I work for an arcade. Clearly, I love video games. Right. Uh, we all just sit around and play games with each other, and we're not violent because we're all just sitting around playing games with each other, and that's really the way it is. Well, and it was funny too because I was walking around and we played a couple games, and they've got Death Race here and Berserk. Yep. Both Berserk and Death Race involve you as a pixel shooting, shooting other stick figures or whatever, yeah, yeah. or running over stick figures if it's Death Race. And I remember just, I, I wasn't even alive at the time, but going through the, the archives and seeing how outraged people were at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and now, you know, for like, it felt like for 10 years or so, no one was outraged anymore about video games. And now it's some weird, weird political point, which I don't even care what side of the aisle, whatever. Uh, why? Are, how are video games being attacked? That's crazy. I don't, I don't um, know. I, I mean, because we work in a retro arcade, we you know, video games are our life, and we know how awesome, fun, good, and how it helps connect people. Uh, it's, it's just cr 
bizarre to me. I, I am very appreciative of the level of security that I see here at, at Let's Play, which yeah. is like, there's some, right? But I just went to a convention earlier this month where I was treated to bomb sniffing dogs. Right, yeah. And I had, uh, I had metal detectors at every entrance and exit. So if I needed to use the restroom, that was going to be a 20 minute trip through the TSA. Well, and, and you, I um, mean, you understand why conventions are doing it nowadays, but it, it's. Well, they, have, they, they, they but, are being forced to by different municipalities and, and venues. I, I, I understand to a degree, but as you know, like, we're playing Tetris here. Like, right, right. <laughs> well,. Yeah, I mean it's it's insane, um, yeah. but I, I think it's been a pro totally appropriate here. They've yeah, got, it's been they've appropriate. Got a really like, great. There, setup. there is security here. I can see them right now. I'm staring right at security, and right. you know if something goes down, we we are covered. And also, I can use the restroom. It's really right, awesome. Right, right. You don't have to go through two different security lines and uh, metal detector and stuff. No, I I think Let's Play's setup is great, and this is actually. Uh, one of the reasons we're involved in this, this is kind of like the exact video game convention I want to exist. Like, um, I want this style where everyone just gets to come hang out for a weekend and play games Free together. Free play. This is, um, this is right. very much your style. All right, so we have two headphones, so we're going to be like cycling people out. We're going to pull in Richard now. Richard. Um, and bring he him seems in. Cool. He's going to swap in for you. Um, All right. Love you guys. We'll we're see just, you next week. Yeah. I mean, this won't air during Let's Play. I don't. It might try to get it up tomorrow. But if you happen to watch this before, come on to Let's Play. It's awesome. Go check out all the results and all the people in those free play shirts. Right. All right. Richard's coming on in. I have like a cool 30 seconds. I get to just hang out by myself. Pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, we are here. Irving Convention Center at Lost Cleanest. Richard is about to come in. Richard, of course is the COO of Free Play Arcade. Richard, also a founder of Free Play Arcade. And the cool thing is, Richard was there at the Let's Play Gaming Expo very first one ever. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had a booth. <laughs> we had a three games there. We um, had three games. What, the what Free Play they? Arcade's, uh, what was the sign? It was the... Uh, something uh, something of obscure right. impromptu games. rushed uh, display of obscure video games or something like that. Yeah. Um, because what happened is we we found out about Let's Play and I remember the conversation. We were like, we have to be at places like that. Like, what is? And that was happening in Plano at the time. We were like, that's just down the road from us. How? Are, uh, like, and we hadn't heard about it, but we found out about it in time. We had a meeting. We got a booth. Uh, we brought uh, Lucky and Wild, Lucky and Wild, Time Pilot '84. And, and something else. Was it King and Balloon? It was King and it Balloon. It was King and Balloon. So, because one of the things was, of course, Estel, um, Rogue Synapse, has this amazing arcade that he was bringing, and he was getting a lot of community members involved, and, um, I mean, he has all the classics covered. Right. So, we had to pick kind of like some goofy stuff that we'd, we'd mix in, and it was really great. Um, it was a really neat, it, it was, was really great as being able to be there with the arcade community. Um, and kind of start playing what our part was eventually going to be, uh, which is, you know, a strong member of the Dallas-Fort Worth well, arcade if, community. If I remember, we, we had just gotten a booth, um, you know, standard vendor type thing. We set up our signs. We had our three games. Uh, we still were using our old logo at the time. Right, like the right. First logo. Oh, yeah. I think that if you go to uh, Free Play Richardson's Facebook and you click images and you go to the very first, uh, like, two or three um, from it has us... With a booth, with a logo, with our old logo, wearing these, you know, impromptu, or quick ordered white T-shirts that we had printed, um, and it went. I mean, it was really cool, though, right? It was a lot of fun. Um, and it was at the. Well, and we met a lot of people at that one. It was at the Plano Center too, which is smaller than this, right. so it had more rooms, like because they had all these little small rooms, but it was different. Uh, it was it was a lot like tighter experience. This is a sprawling convention center, massive, oh, yeah. massive. Um, and I'd probably say they probably have more vendors here now. They have, I mean, especially this year. And then oh, the, absolutely. And it's the definitely grown. Well, and the arcade is big. It's um, amazing. So, and one of the things that happened is slowly we played more and more of a role in this arcade. Cause I, and I think that that was really cool because, you know, Estel has this hardcore, amazing old school, like, 80s collection. And I know Let's Play started trying to source some of, like, the 90s games and stuff. And then they came to us and they're like, look, let's, let's bolster this and blow it up. And we we're like, cool. We'll 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 bring it. So, what do we have? I I don't actually have the count. I've been saying about thirty games here. Yeah, I honestly don't have the count either. Right. Even though we, I three mean, truckloads. We have three truckloads, and we have some big games like Killer Queen, the 
versus cities that are big and take up a lot of space, the two 29-inch monitors and stuff. So, but yeah, I'd guess somewhere between 30 and 35 games. All right, so when we first, I mean, it's really amazing because we went before we opened. So we, we went well, without any clue if free play was ever going to even work or well, be a thing. Well, and this was for the first Let's Play, and I remember we had actually pulled an all-nighter before because we were trying to get Universal Zero Hour working that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we spent, like, six hours that night um, just trying to get a monitor working in that game. Right, we right. We did I, not end up uh, bringing it because as soon as we put a brand new uh, monitor into this Universal Zero Hour cabinet, we got it all booted up and it was missing the sprites. Yeah, it has a sprite glitch that we've never figured out. We Just because we've never gone back to it. Well, uh, right. We've been busy because <laughs> shortly thereafter, um, the build on free play took all of our time, and then the opening of free play took all of our time, and now you know there's multiple free plays and stuff. But we should pull that out, though. Yeah, I mean we've we've got to look at it <laughs> soon. Um, and yeah, that was and so our first display here though was to just find three games that were going to be not in Estel's collection because you know we of course we had things like Donkey Kong and Pac Man and Space Invaders, but so did Estel. So all right. it was all about us um, supplementing, and now it's a lot more fun to supplement because now we're bringing like 30 games, and Estel still has all the classic. It's totally covered. Rogue Snaps is totally um, has them. Man, so their vector collection is just well, off the hook. Well, I was just playing. God, I one of the, one of them, and it was it was so cool. It was the now nah, I can't even remember what it was called. <laughs> uh, but I mean, like I mean, so many great games over there. Um, so many super rare games that no one probably like even can fully like unless if you're in the arcade scene fully understand how rare some of that stuff is. And we we bring a lot of rare stuff here too, but. Uh, like as a true arcade nerd, that it really gets me going. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's really neat setup. Um, we're here. Let's play Irving Convention Center at Las Colinas. Uh, they've got three stages set up this time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are podcasting uh, live. And so, what was it? How was the loadout today? I mean, so what's really nice? I, I guess that's actually what I wanted to get to. Is we used to just have to spend night after night after night staying up all night getting games ready for these types of things. Oh man! Because if you think about it. Uh, putting 30 games out that haven't ne that aren't necessarily coming off our floor, and that's right. I we have w the Killer Queen came off of the floor. Nothing else. Every I mean, the Tecmo Bowl technically came off the floor, but it's not going. Well, we back. were doing that with yeah. the game rotation. We anyway. rot we were rotating it off. So um, one game came off the floor. Every other game had to be kind of ready to go. Yeah. Um, but. One, because of Akon a couple months ago, we had a lot of games that we had already done a lot of that work to get ready. But Well, and we've been prepping games for the Fort Worth location, so fortunately right. we have a, a lot of things that we, are ready to go. Well, yeah, our backstock might be bigger than ever right now <laughs> um, in, in terms of, like, working games. Um, so it was not so much the prep. It was just, you know, actually having to get them here. Three truckloads uh, right. in we our larger truck. Josh, fortunately, you know, he... Uh, uh, did a great job prepping all of the new stuff that we wanted to bring out, the stuff we didn't take to Akon, uh, working to get stuff improved and, um, you know, fix the small issues that we had from some of the games at Akon. Um, and then, yeah, it's actually been really easy this time around, especially coming off of Akon, just loading up the trucks and um, over two days loading in is amazing. And right, right. Well, yeah, having some time, having the ability to just kind of do it is nice. And, oh, you know what I haven't talked about yet is the layout of the arcade this time oh, is, so is so much cool. better. It's, well, it's, it's, it's these huge pods instead of just lines of arcades, which I love lines of arcades, but the nice thing about pods is we can get behind almost every game here and work on it Easily. if something happens. And and it's so nice. And like if you want to go take a nap, you can just go behind the games. You can crash. Man, I love that they just have like that big Stay Puff, Puff Marshmallow Man <laughs> behind uh, their well, lines Well, I asked of them arcades. and they were just like, we didn't really know what to do. And <laughs> like we had this and we would take up some space. Hey, so I we love threw it. It's like just like towering over the right. arcades. Like well, I'm going to crush the city. No, my big, my. I really wish we had brought the three-player Ghostbusters. Uh. Like, if we knew we could have brought three-player Ghostbusters and put it right there, and it would have been, like, the best photo op ever. We'll just have to coordinate for next year. Um, but, okay, so what of the games we didn't bring, the other games that have been brought by either Rogue Snaps or the community, what's your favorite um, that you've seen? Oh, man, I am obsessed with uh, Speed Freak right yeah. now. I don't know. It plays very similar to Night Driver. I think it came out... Uh, what, 1979? Right, it's a vector game, So, though. yeah, it's a vector game. Crazy. And uh, it is ridiculously hard, but it's, like, my favorite kind of driving game. Right, well, and that was what I was trying to tell everyone. I was like, I knew you were going to love that because of Night Driver. Yep. Um, which, you know, Night Driver, we actually had on the floor for so long. It's really amazing to think about how long we had Night Driver 
an old Atari Black and White. I wanna, out. I wanna dig that back out. Well, uh, all we sometime. need to do is repair one main thing. And I know. I mean, it's a switch, but it's not a switch that they make anymore. So we'll, we, we that one does need to get back on the floor because it, it did work out really well. And we have with four arcades opening, we're about to have a lot of more kind of latitude on our floors because we get to kind of spread out some more. And what we've kind of seen is we, we'll open up an arcade, and the game floors will just get more and more stacked. Um, and and it's not like. I miss a lot of games that have been rotated off, but there's like there's these de facto like superstar games that keep coming to the floor that then it gets really hard to take off. I don't um, know. I, I really enjoy the early days when we first opened an arcade and we put some miscellaneous things in there before people start requesting things, before, you know, we have the obligation to like build it up to the, the super collection. Um, because we, we get a lot more flexibility. We get to put some of the quirkier games on the floor, and some of those quirky games are my favorite, so. Well, and, and I mean, yeah, we, we launched with games like Virtual Fighter 4 in great shape. It was a great game, but, like, I don't, when I think about free play right now, it's hard to think of how I, we'd get that on the floor. That said, that's, uh, we do have that new, you know, the new Journey to Journeyman program every Wednesday where they're bringing out random fighters and just playing them because, we have Super Turbo, we have Third Strike, but there's hundreds of really great fighters even that we don't even get to rotate on. And the nice thing about fighters is very rarely do they care about which, ca which dedicated cabinet it's in because right. most of them didn't have a dedicated cabinet. Um, so we can just throw them in the Versa City and, and get them. So that's been really awesome. I mean, it's really neat to see their growth here. It's really neat because uh, what I was just talking to Chris about is how they've, they've, you know, the tournaments are no longer here at Let's Play, the big, big monster stuff. Right. So. This is the true, like, nerd heaven for just, like, people who are a little bit more casual. Like, I'm a casual game player. I, I, I mean, I think some people might roll their eyes at that. <laughs> but I am relatively <laughs> casual at playing video games. I don't get that much time to play. Not anymore. Um, and I, I mostly, you know, I get to play, like, one game for 10, 15, 20 minutes and then move on to the next game, um, which is why arcades work so well for me. Well, right. Um, but they ha being able to just come, enjoy, and, I mean, we got CRTs galore. We got a little bit of pinball. I saw a jackpot. Yeah. Uh, my favorite part of the jackpot is it has four wheels on it. Cracks me off. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. We'd, you'd see people like <laughs> sliding around free play with that if we had wheels on our pinball. I mean, they already move so much. Um, all right, so have you been upstairs yet? Have you checked out anything up there? They've got panel rooms. They've got all sorts Haven't of stuff. Haven't checked out any of the panel rooms. Just got some lunch upstairs, but uh, you know. So cool. I mean. That's pretty much it. I think we've got Darren about ready to come in. Uh, we're just yeah. alternating. Yeah, come on in. Here. Um, yeah. So next up, up is Darren. Peace and off. From See Let's later. Play. Works uh, closely with. And I'll, I'll let him do his own introduction. Um, all right. So hi. Uh, we're here. Let's right. Play. Darren, um, I don't know what your official title is. So I guess will you tell the camera, tell all the people what you do at Let's Play and all of that. Sure, sure. So I'm one of the founders, one of the seven guys that started this thing. Uh, I am responsible for the arcade area, um, sourcing machines, fixing machines, all that type of stuff. Uh, and then uh, there's kind of a board of directors that runs the thing. We just all together decide what's going to happen here, what kind of stuff we're going to have. Well, and so you're one of the founders, you're in charge of the arcade, and obviously Let's Play has like, I mean, I know you wouldn't, you don't want to like brag, but Let's Play is one of the best convention arcades that exists. I've been to lots of them. Um, and I, I know a lot of it is is through your hard work and through Rogues and Apps, right? Like, oh, yeah. I mean, that's a sick collection. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it, it's so cool to see so many vectors show up. It's so cool. Like, I know there's there's plenty of people that come here that are, like, more modern gamers. But to watch them kind of walk through this kind of arcade and just have classic after classic, color vector after color vector, um, I know that it's just totally mind-blowing for them. And it's, like, a whole new experience each time because, I mean, like... A lot of these games, like, I mean, free play has a lot of games on the floor. Yeah. But a lot of these games don't exist at free play. That's right. I mean, you, I mean, and a lot of them couldn't. So that's what I think is really, really cool here. It's like, I mean, I'm an arcade nerd, right? So, like, being able to come here and play this stuff is so exciting for me um, that I just assume everyone in the world must just love it. Oh, um, yeah. So what's it like, though, getting prepped for Let's Play? Like, what are your last two or three weeks like? Oh, man, the, the last two or three weeks are always rough because we're finishing up the projects that we've got that we've put off all year that we haven't worked on or you know you need some obscure part or you know whatever the problem is I mean a, a lot of this stuff you know it's it's really hard to get a board for uh, uh, you know solar quest working right. or you know anything like that uh, 
and then you start testing machines because you want to make sure that the, the quality is good and the people are going to be able to play them easily, and there's always stuff that breaks. Uh, well, and one of the things I know is you're bringing such rare games. It's not like back in 76 they had free play modes or anything. That's right. You're trying to figure out a way to, that people can easily figure out how to play the thing. Yeah, um, yeah, and that, that, we did that a lot of that even this morning. We were still putting <laughs> free play buttons on games and, you know, how does the Cinematronics 3-wire thing work? And, uh, yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that, but uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, you know, of course, with Dr. Vance and uh, a lot of people know Noel. Um, yeah, this is what we do. We get together every Sunday and we hang out and we work on games. And, uh, uh, you know, even uh, starting as soon as next weekend, we'll be back to building games for next year's Let's Play. You know, what projects do we have in the warehouse that, that nobody's ever seen before and we want to bring and, uh, and we want new ideas? Well, and that's what's really cool here is, and, and I you see, like, new ones pop up each year. You all have all of these custom games that, you know, custom cabs that you've built for different games. Um, and it's it's really kind of exciting. What's your like? What's your prize possession here at the at, at this arcade? Like, which one is your baby that you love the most that you're so happy that you get people to play? Oh man, um, I, you know it's it's kind of funny, but I'm I'm a big fan of Moon Patrol, and for some reason that one always resonated with me as a kid. I played it constantly, and I'm, I'm actually hoping that somebody will beat my score on it. <laughs> I only know one other person in town. It's John Hardy over at the National Video Game Museum. He's still just a couple thousand points above me on their board. <laughs> uh, we, we went back and forth for about six months. He'd beat me, I'd beat him. And, uh, you know, so from a kind of competitive standpoint, that's the one. And, and it's not a fancy game. It's not, you know, super popular, but uh, but I love it. Well, the Moon Patrol has this, like, way of pulling you into it. Like, you'll, you'll go up there, you'll start a credit, you'll play, you'll die, and then you'll be like, wait a second, I gotta do that again. Yeah. And over and over. It's not, I mean, because, like, it's it's kind of like the opposite of Defender in that way. Defender, you'll play, you'll die, and you'll be like, wow. Whoa. I don't know what happened, <laughs> I don't understand what I'm looking at these controls, I'm just gonna back away. But Moon Patrol is like the opposite. It's yeah. like, you die, and you're like, I know what I did wrong, I'm gonna try again and again. Yeah. I yeah. think that's actually the genius of Moon Patrol. It's been one of the most, like, a big priority for us to have at our, our arcades, um, because, like, it's so friendly to consumers, and then it's so addictive. Right. Yeah, it's really right. awesome. Yeah, you know game. you can do better, and you want to keep going back to it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so early on the podcast, we're talking, y'all have the big wizard tournament. And, like, the theme of this whole event this year, right, is it's kind of like the wizard, which is it the 30th? Uh, this is the 30th anniversary of the wizard. 30th. Yeah. Um, and y'all have a massive sprawling tournament. Hundreds of people sign up. They all have numbers and stuff walking around. It's super cool. Um, and we, we kind of talked about what, what that was. What, what else is new this year here at the at Let's Play? Oh, new stuff. I mean, there's just always things we're doing. We're also celebrating the 10th anniversary of Borderlands. Uh, that's a better big thing for us. You know, we've got the cool wall that uh, you can maybe see back there. I kind saw of part them working it. on it. Like, uh, it was so cool. Yeah, we had an artist that worked on it like almost 200 hours or something oh, like that. It's a crazy amount of work into that. Uh, you know, so we've got that. Uh, we're doing a, a Rampage tournament where at the end of it, you get to play Brian Collin, the guy that created nice. it. Uh, you know, thanks to the National Video Game Museum for loaning us their hey, yeah, gorgeously saw, restored machine. It nice, it's, yeah. it's beautiful, yeah. Well, um, that was actually because, you know, I'm always walking through and I'm like, wait a second, we got the right joysticks? This is, I was like, yes, yeah, this is nice. Yeah, it's yeah. always. It plays fantastically. I mean, they just did a great job on it. Awesome. Uh, and, uh, oh, God, what else are we doing? I mean, we've got uh, the 501st is out doing some stuff with Extra Life. Um, yeah, is that is that a whole stage for Extra Life right there? Is yeah. that awesome? Yeah, yeah I we're mean, doing we, a lot of streaming with that. Obviously, we partner with them every year um, during our, like, 25-hour day or whatever. Right. Um, but, I mean, it's such a cool organization. We were talking earlier, like, in these weird times where video games, like, people are like, are video games good? I, Extra Life is something that I always point to and just be like, clearly they're good. Yeah, they're here's, so, here's proof. So much good stuff that um, they do for the community and the, the people that need it. So, yeah, so uh, the, on the Borderlands thing, it's, it's always really cool because Gearbox is in town. Right. They're in Frisco. Um, so, I mean, this is like, I, I'm, and I'm kind of weird because I didn't get to play Borderlands when it was first coming out, but I hired a bunch of people who are either like married to people that work at Gearbox or, you know, sure. like, have connections to Gearbox. So I started playing, and it's, of course, an amazing game, really fun, really awesome. But it's so cool being here with Gearbox 3 coming up uh -huh. because people are across the world are so hyped, and we get to, like, do that. They get to, you know, I, I assume y'all are having, like, a panel with some people. Oh, yeah, we've, we've got a bunch of the people that worked on it. We've got a bunch of the voice actors that were in it. Um, I just all sorts of people are coming. Uh, even extended an invite out to Randy Pitchford to see if maybe he might just, you know, randomly show up. Oh, and yeah, he's just down the he's road. He's just down the road. road. <laughs> right, yeah. So, I mean, he may be walking around here now. We just don't know it yet. But uh, I've already seen some great cosplay for uh, Borderlands. There's a, an animated claptrap running around that's just wow, fantastic I have not looking. Seen that yet. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. So, obviously, y'all, I mean, Let's Play in general is like 
relatively purist, and it's like you know awesome to see you know CRTs and everything. Yeah. Have y'all talked about it all like? a time where y'all might not be able to bring as many of the tube TVs there? Are y'all ever like talking about, I mean, I, cause that's, a th I know it's a practicality, right? Eventually yeah. it's like, are we going to eventually do that? Well, and, cause I want to make sure I say that from the outset, I think it's the coolest thing ever to see all these CRTs. Yeah. yeah. And I love, cause y'all come in, yeah, there's like pallets with CRTs. Right, with double stack pallets like, it's so, and, it's yeah. like so pro. I'm like, man, that, it's so neat to see that. I guess like, I know a lot of other conventions have, um, They've kind of just been like, we'll just use the anniversary version because it's yeah. easier and stuff. Y'all yeah. don't do that here. That's no. what's really cool. No, I mean, it, really, everybody that runs the, the convention is about that that pure experience of the way it's supposed to be. I mean, if you walk through our arcades, you won't find a right. single LCD unless it's something that we specifically built to use an LCD. You know, none of our classic stuff is running any of that. All the original boards, where we can, original controls. Right. And, and it extends into the, the consoles and stuff. I mean, you don't come out here and find Retrons. Right. You know, we're right. running real NESs that we meticulously restore over the year and, you know, make sure that all that's running. But it gives a better experience for people. And Well, and it's something they can't do at home. Right. Like, there's, that's, that's always what I always thought was important, both, like, in a, the free play business model, but also seeing it at Let's Play. You want to make sure that it's not, like... The, they can load up their Xbox One and play all this stuff. They can't. They yeah. have to come here and kind of yep. enjoy the experience, which is a, also really cool because it's a whole weekend of people playing these games together exactly. and like a social yeah. kind so of communal. Much community. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's super, super neat. So how long did it take to move your games in? How many truckloads? Y'all had a big truck, I saw. Yeah, I we, had a, we had a big 26-footer like usual. So it was um, pretty much three loads that we brought in. I think... Uh, how many games do y'all have that aren't, I mean, that are either yours or... Uh, Rogue Synapse or Let's Play. How many did y'all personally move in here? Uh, so it was about 78, I think, was Sounds what we actually right. brought. Yeah. Uh, and then there were some stragglers that came in from some other friends of ours. Right. And, uh, you know, we'd pick up a onesie twosie here, but because uh, yeah, this is the first time y'all try to do like you know, bring a game, we'll hook you up with the pass. Right. Like what I I, I bet I understand. I bet I know your biggest problem is though. Y'all have such an extensive and expansive collection that everyone who's like, I'll bring a Pac-Man or I'll bring, you're like, we're covered on that. Yeah. Uh, I, I bet that was pretty tough this year. Uh, it's, it's a little tricky, but, you know, honestly, if somebody wants to bring a Pac-Man, we'll leave ours right. at home and we'll right. bring something yeah. else I rare. Guess that works. So, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it balances out. And honestly, on a game like Pac-Man or Donkey Kong, having two, wouldn't having be two is not yeah. a problem, you're yeah, because right. people are going to play it. Well, yeah, we... We often have a Miss Pack stand up and a Miss Pack cocktail in our arcades. Sure. And we still have people who are like, Where's Miss Pack? Yeah. I want more. Uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and from our perspective, it's always really fun because we have your list, right, of games that are potentially coming and we're like plugging gaps. We're right, like, right. What, what kind of weird stuff do we get to bring? Um, which is really nice because then we don't have to, you know, we're not worried about making sure our Donkey Kong's ready. We're, we're worried right. about making sure some random. Yeah, it's cool a great synergy between us. I mean, you guys bring a lot of the stuff that, that we don't have. I mean, we really focus more towards kind of the obscure stuff, vectors, and, and really older stuff. I right. mean, we kind of stop about 1984, 85, with a few exceptions. So you guys can come in and bring the row of candies, which is just fantastic to see. Yeah, and I mean, that's, I mean, it's really amazing because when we first did Let's Play, like, we were there, right? That We had a little booth, the yeah. first one with three little <laughs> games. And um, we, I, I, just thinking back, if you would have told me, is it, so is this the fourth or fifth? I can't. This is the fifth year. Fifth. Wow. Yeah, I know. I know. Free play Richardson. Wow. All right. <laughs> so, um, what's really amazing to me is if you came to me and you're like, in a few years, in five years or whatever, four and a half years, you're going to be bringing a row of candy cabs to this event. I would have been yeah. like, that's crazy. Yeah, we're never, why, why would we have, and now I'm just like, yes, yeah, of course we're bringing it. it. So, yeah. it's just, it's, it's interesting how things kind of like evolve and change. Um, and obviously now y'all being in the space, it's huge. Right. It's expansive. And I mean, I was just talking about how cool, I'm so in love with the arcade layouts right now. And it's, it's something I geek about a lot because like, you know, we have our arcades and we're always constantly shifting stuff and trying to figure out the, the best layout. This one, I just, it feels so good to me. Like it feels so welcoming. Yeah. Uh, Instead of just having the rows of arcades, you've got the, all these pods. Right, right. We were um, able to get a little bit more space for people to kind of move around. We've got a lot more of the games that you can actually see the side art, which, right. yeah, I never really put much thought into it, but people dig that. I mean, they want to see what the side of it looks like, and that may be the memory that, that they have from, you know, seeing it at 7-Eleven when they were a kid, and that's what they were playing, and, and, you know, bringing that back to them is just fantastic. Well, and, and obviously during the early 80s, there was so much effort going into the cabinets. Right. The side, I mean, because by the late 80s, early 90s, things were basically convert so many conversions yeah. and just black dynamo cabinets that it wasn't the same. But in those early 80s, oh, you had people spending, you know, hours and hours and hours just painting the size of these right, cabs right. with the stencils looking right and everything. Yep. Not to mention the super professional design. Um, where did the Xevious come from that y'all keep bringing? 
That's the most beautiful Zevius I've ever seen in my entire uh, we, life. We, we bought that from a local collector. Oh my gosh! Uh, he he happened to be hanging out with us one uh, one weekend, and he was like, "Hey, does anybody want a Zevius?" And like, man, it's took it's some nice. pictures of it. Yeah, it's a gorgeous I mean, machine. I bet that was. I bet he bought that like because Zevius wasn't exactly a successful game. So he, I bet he bought it way back when, had it forever, he played yeah. it occasionally, and God, it looks great. Yeah, no, it's it's a, a lot of fun, and yeah, it's, well, it's Zevius, gorgeous. I, well, Zevius is really controversial in our arcade because some people think it's the greatest sound design ever, and some people think it's absolutely the worst. Um, and I, I think it's, I think it's really like if you dig the few sounds that it makes, right. it's awesome. But if you don't really dig it, you, it's it's like, it gets yeah. into your head and just keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, you have the the big uh, wizard tournaments. You've got a Tetris qualifier for the World Series. I can't remember. Yeah, Tetris World Series. Yeah, um, we are qualifying. We actually do end up sending somebody to the finals. Whoever wins here gets uh, basically a direct entry into that. Well, and one of the things we've been doing this year, um, not really under the radar, but you know, kind of, we've been slowly training up people to wear free play shirts. Like our best, our best Tetris players here. <laughs> we're like, we're because we always want to, you know, especially. I mean, because Chris Delps all, you know, of course, bummed. Now he works for right, free play. Right, he can't, yeah, so, he's so he's trying to live vicariously <laughs> through uh, through these other gamers he's been training up. Because Chris Delps, like, he used to. Both here and before he worked for Freeplay at Freeplay, like he had a good supplemental income winning yeah, game, exactly. winning stuff yeah. because he was so good at stuff. Yeah, he won, I think, what, two or three arcade machines from yeah, us I think before he, won he hired two. on. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? Well, I, remember, I remember just being like, Chris, I'm not here to crush your dreams, but you're, you're an employee now, it's over. And he was like, Okay, I think I can deal with this. Uh. And then you can see him just like watching the finals, being like, I could have done better. Uh, that's uh, great. All the, but yeah, no. Uh, Chris Delp, of course, the community liaison. For, actually, he was on the podcast already. So the people who, if they're watching this, they they know who he is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, how? So what are y'all gonna? What what will y'all consider a success this year? Is it increased attendance or or what? Well, you know, increased attendance is always nice, but honestly, when we're walking around, if we just see people having fun, that's our measure of success. I mean, that's that's why we do this. It's not really about how many people we get through the door or how much money we're making or anything like that on it. It's, it's really a labor of love and it's just seven guys that got together and wanted to make the show that we all wanted to attend and if people are having fun and people talk about it and you know we hear year over year, oh, I was here last year or the year before and it was great so I brought my family and I brought this person. That's the win for us. Well, and that's that's just why I'm I'm so pumped that I grew up in DFW area because yeah. I mean stuff great, like this happens it's a here. Great community, it really um, is. And and now it's yeah. I mean, this is I don't think it, it it's hard to really describe because there's lots of conventions that have lots of arcade, but I I don't think I it's like it's even conceivable to me because I've I've been to conventions where you'll have like those ten Pac-Mans that were brought from home and and which is great. I, yeah. I love them all. It's cool I'm, to see. But this, I mean, it's it's so insane just to see what shows up. Yeah. Um, I love it so much. Well, we try to, we try to do that. We try to keep it fresh every year. I don't want to be the the show that has the same fifty games every year and you get bored of it. I want people to walk by and go, Death Race. What is that? Right. I've never seen this or I've heard of it and I've always wanted to play it. And then even some of the custom builds, like you said, you know, things that never existed, and uh, you know, we just put a cab together and make art for it. And well, it's really funny about the custom builds because when I first saw them, I was like, I just like, I was such a purist. I was like, I just like the. And now, of course, I've been in the game for a few years. I'm like, all I care about is the custom builds. I'm like, yes, this is so cool. Like, it's so weird how it kind of changes over time. So, and one of the things I wanted to touch on before we we close out this podcast. <laughs> So this is a massive endeavor. Like y'all have a board, y'all have time. Like a lot of people see conventions and they never really think about how much goes into it. Like you were just talking about, someone spent 200 hours painting a cool display here, yeah. and uh, of course they did because it's, it's beautiful. But that's like the amount of time and effort that goes into this. Um, it, it just it, it blows me away. And we've you know we run our spring series where we have a bunch of uh, tournaments and stuff, and we actually looked at big venues trying to figure out like if we could go to a convention center or a hotel that has something like that. And ultimately, we just found like it was going to be so hard yeah. to like to, to first you know get a good venue, but also figure out how to make that venue work and right. all of the logistics that go into something like this. It's just crazy. I mean, I think y'all do such a good job that it just blows me away. Um, Thank you. It's like I mean, vendor. Then and we were talking about earlier. It's not the the vendor apocalypse like it was like when it, there were three cons the same weekend. Yeah, that and, was and that's so another weird. thing that no one online understood, right? Venues, y'all did this a while. Y'all all started trying to get your venue a long time ago, and eventually you're kind of locked in, and th you know yeah, it's, it's hard to change this stuff. Um, and I know every time we pick a date for anything, that's a, that's the hardest thing. We've, we're picking dates for tournaments, and we're looking like nationwide to find uh, we, like we have a little small $500 pinball coming up uh, tournaments. 
and we scheduled it, we checked everything, and then it turns out the very next day there's another major pinball tournament in the area that we missed, and so now course, we're like yeah. trying to work something out, but it does, it almost doesn't matter. But no, I think this one, this is, I mean, uh, I, I, mean, I like Smash as much as the next every time <laughs> that Ghostbusters goes <laughs> that off. Ghostbusters is awesome. <laughs> but uh, uh, this, is, this is really just, uh, I mean, it's like the convention that I, well, that's why we're a part of it. I love coming here, so it, it, it's like perfect. I think y'all did great. Well, thank so. you. We appreciate that. I, like I said, it's, uh, it's the convention that we all wanted to attend. You know, all of us had been to all the different conventions across the U.S. and, and even some internationally, and... We took little pieces of everything and put it together in what, what we've got here, and you know we yes. just hope people enjoy it. Well, that, I think that you know, a the fact that this is labor of love totally shows, um, and, and b it definitely shows that there are a diverse interest in your group too that really all comes together in gaming um, here. So that's really really neat. Okay, so I think there's a decent chance I'm looking at the videographer Matt. I think this might be up tomorrow. Is that true? Um, okay. So, how much uh, does it cost if they wanted to, if they watch this and they want to come tomorrow, Saturday or Sunday? Um, I don't know what the door admissions are. Yeah. So I think tomorrow is like thirty bucks for for just tomorrow. Sunday I think is twenty five. Uh, you can still get weekend passes, and they're I think forty five. And right. I forgot. Tomorrow night y'all have a concert just across somewhere. Yeah, that's around, right. I think it's somewhere yeah, around, right? somewhere over there and, like, somewhere. Like the amphitheater yeah, that's, yeah. that's attached because. Uh, the city of Irving, I guess, built this whole big thing with yeah, the Toyota this, Music Factory. And it's a really great outdoor uh, area. We'll have uh, four different bands, I think, are performing. Inverse Phase, uh, Descendants of Erdrich, um, Mercurius FM, and uh, the last one's escaping me. But, and uh, it's free with the badge, right? free with the If you have a Saturday badge or a weekend pass, you get in for free. Come hang out with us. There's probably going to be some gaming going on there. Yeah, I heard something about like a big screen, big screen Smash Ultimate or something. Yeah, yeah I think that's what I, we're I heard on doing. Like yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so if you're watching this on the internet and it is the 9th, 10th, or 11th, yeah, 9th and 11th um, of August, come on out. Let's play gaming expo. It's uh, Irving Convention Center at Las Colinas. So uh, for that, that's the end of this free play podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click those subscribe buttons. There's bell icons. There's all sorts of stuff. Just, just subscribe. It's awesome content, and you know you want more. So uh, until next time, we are signing off. Thanks, guys. Thanks.